Welcome. This is Spirited Conversations number five, and I am so excited to welcome Kerry McLeod to join us today. Kerry is a little surprise gift that's been one of the many silver linings in this current COVID-19 lockdown place we find ourselves in. And um, I discovered her gentle and strong mediumship style in an online spiritualist service about six weeks ago. And together with her husband, Philip Dykes, they were the digital platform mediums in uh, We Don't Die Radio. And it, it was a blessing for me because probably like many of you, we're looking for that connection. We can't go to a spiritualist church. We, we can't get our spiritualist peeps uh, there and and we were all looking and I'm very very happy that I came across uh, We Don't Die Radio and Carrie McLeod, but um, Since then Carrie looks like she's been very very busy uh, She left a corporate life and she uses her qualifications in psychotherapy and transformational counseling to work for the spirit world and and she says it really nicely and I really get this that the phone line, the phone from the spirit world just kept ringing and ringing until it was time to work for the spirit world full time. And, and thank goodness she does. So um, I love this little mantra for Kerry says, she describes her mediumship as embracing the joy within communication is losing yourself and bringing their story to life. So welcome Kerry McLeod. Well, hello, and thank you for inviting me on here. It's a real pleasure. Well, I'm excited. I would have to say that, you know, I got up really early this morning to do this. So it's about 6 a.m. for you. It's about 9 p.m. 6 a.m. for me, 9 p.m. for you. So I think we're doing rather well, don't you? I think so, too. That big <laughs> time difference. It was going to be early or late for one or other of us. It was. It was. But, you know, this is spirit work, right? So... Yes, absolutely. It is. So it's a joy to be here. Yes, and and I'm you know I've got a thousand questions I, I'm dying to ask you, but oh, we've got all day then. <laughs> we have, we have. Um, <laughs> but your mediumship, you know, it's it's your special brand. You know, you definitely give your stamp to it, which is just lovely. What is it about mediumship that keeps you going? You know, getting up all hours uh, and and giving messages in difficult situations. I think for me, this my spirit work is it's part of who I am. It became part of who I am a long time ago. But I did. I've been working in the churches and centres throughout the UK and Europe for well, the UK certainly for over twenty years. So it's my daughter's used to it. She's twenty three now, so right. she knows no different. So it's really part of who I am. And what keeps me going is the difference I see it makes. I know that mediumship is about healing and I know that the mediumship is about proving life after physical death, but it's that healing process that happens, but it's also the tiny seed that's planted when you give a reading to somebody and you see them scratching their heads thinking, how on earth did they know that about my relative? And then they leave and their journey of discovery and unfolding that spiritual self within them begins. And that's what keeps me going and giving that unseen world a voice. If, not if, when my time goes to go to the spirit world, I really want a medium who is able to share my personality and my memories and my love and, and everything that I am, honestly and truthfully. So what keeps me going is the fact that I seem to have this opportunity to work for that unseen world and the door bell keeps ringing for the spirit world to come and work with me and it's just a real blessing and i can't differentiate between me and um before mediumship and after because it's like i don't really recognize that process through the, the last 40 years has been evolving and it's it, it, it's it's not anywhere i can really put my finger on because it just became part of me. And then, well, the spirit world opened doors. It's up to us whether we choose to walk through the door. But the spirit yeah. world will always open doors or windows in order to allow us to find out who we are and truly who we are. And I think that's part of what thrills me as well. I get to know me, everybody I come in contact with or read for, whether it be in the spirit world or here. 
I get to know a little bit more about me as well through them. So it's a real pleasure to be able to work for them. That's so true. We, we get a lot out of it, even as we give and even as we serve. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that's that's awesome and i have watched you in some difficult situations um in some of the videos and that's that's actually why i contacted you uh, i think i watched the one in fort lauderdale and you know you had to work very hard for spirit that day and um i'm sitting in the lounge room watching it on you know with my headphones and you know i'm just going yeah <laughs> and of course my partner goes What's she doing? But, you know, you've got to cheer so much when you believe in the spirit world more than you believe in your own doubts or your own fears or your own even what someone else is saying. You know, that is true strength, isn't it? I think the no is the, the biggest issue for a lot of mediums when they get the no. When we're told no as a younger person, it has that effect of basically shutting us up. Yes. So we have to overcome that and move into a place where the no allows us to really get more involved in the contact with the communicator. And it's that switch of what happens inside of us that allows us to work with the no. And well, we teach that no is new opportunity. It's not no, it's just another way of finding out the truth. And so when I get a no, and I know something to be true inside, then Phil has a saying, he's like a dog with a bone. I don't have a better saying than that. But there's something there that I don't want to let go because if the spirit world has given me it, it must be important. Yes, it is. And so many student mediums are terrified of getting it wrong, aren't they? terrified but if only they knew i know that and i love how you say let me help you <laughs> so, <laughs> so, let me tell you that you're wrong but no you do it in such a lovely way so i know that you said that you've you know you've been doing this for 20 years and 40 years of your personal life but you know to me it just feels like you've just popped out of nowhere you know from we don't die radio through the grace of you know the lockdown and and the pandemic um but you know, we're often the sum total of all our teachers, aren't we, and all our life experience. And I, I hear you t speak very warmly about one teacher in particular, Jock MacArthur. Um, what would you say the lasting legacy uh, of your mentor would be? What, what has he given you that you now give your own students? Oh, wow. I actually feel emotional hearing you say his name because it's, that's his legacy. There's somebody in Australia now, speaking about him, <laughs> somebody on the other side of the world speaking about him and him and I were once asked to work a, in Australia and due to his health, we never got the chance. He was a trance and physical medium <gasps> and his health deteriorated. He did platform as well, but his health deteriorated to the point he was una unable to travel and I was fairly um, early in terms of working in the public arena so i didn't have the confidence to be able to do it on my own his legacy would be um i suppose everybody that comes in contact with myself or anybody else that has been trained by him his legacy is holding to the fundamentals of what spiritualism was we um, placed a, a bench at the arthur finley college with his plaque on because that's where right. he loved to go uh, he walked around the bench in the garden so those of you watching that yes mm -hmm. so for those of you watching the bench has long since gone but his plaque is on there's an archway and you, there's plaques alone on there so anybody that goes there say hi to jock from me um the legacy is such that there's an authenticity about the spirit world um there's a genuine love of the spirit world and a genuine truth in what the spirit world is about and i think for me it's the belief in i've seen physical mediumship uh, in a way that i've never seen it since mm. and i've experienced trance in a way that very few times after that have i i mean i have experienced people speaking in trance but when it's a mentor and friend there's something very special about that mm. his legacy is also we have a, a church um, in Scotland called Dunfermline Association of Spiritualists and Kindred Spirits. Jock was the founding member along with myself and other members of his family and other people subsequently in 
spirit world. And when Jock passed into the spirit world in 2012, I took over from Jock as president. So his legacy lives on because we talk about Jock's values um, and we will sit in our meetings and say, oh, if Jock were here now, he'd have the answer. Because we were thinking about online demonstrations and in a way that's, we got together with Sandra, she had an idea of an online demonstration and we said, our church has had to close down. Yeah. Wouldn't it be lovely if we could combine the two? Yes. And voila, Here it happened. Are. So his legacy lives on. I'm sure there was one lady um, I know well in north of Scotland and she said, not everybody liked Jock but they all respected him. Mm. And that's a sign of a true leader. That's a sign of somebody who stands firm to their beliefs. So I'm sure other people that have known him will have their own way of remembering him. But for me, it's that strength and that firm belief in what the spirit world do, the ethics, the values and the morals around about working with the spirit world. That's so lovely to have that. And in a way, he does live on in, in the values and, and the way that you're continuing the way you do mediumship and, and thank goodness for online demonstrations, huh? Mm. Yeah, I know. And it's in a way it's sort of pioneering in a new way, isn't it? Our mediums are, st are learning how to work and discovering that it does work online and connections can be made and you can reach so many more people. So Absolutely. I think mediumship is changing. I don't think mediumship will ever be the same again. And I know it's an awful reason that we are, in our homes and we are online but in another way it's allowed us to reach people we would like yourself it's allowed us to reach people we'd never have contact with mm -hmm. and it allows us to spread the word of the spirit world the spirit world has um, many pioneers that have set the trends over the years and those pioneers have stood firm um, in the face of adversity at times in order to stand up for what the spirit world is about and I think in this more modern day, in a new way, in this new wave of need, and there will be a wave of need sadly comes out of this, mm. then if we've got mediums that have, um, that are able to access a real authenticity within spiritualism, because of this new network of everybody working together, then it can only be a benefit to the spirit world and mm. those that want to learn more about what happens after we physically die. Completely. And there is a need, isn't there right now? There is a big need. And, it, you know, I remember reading about how there was a huge need for mediumship and, and the questions about what happens when we die after the Second World War and certainly after the First World War. And so, again, I, you know, it's almost like the world is, is in that place where they're going, oh, we're confronted by our mortality again. Maybe it's time to look into this. So... Yeah, I love There's it. an opportunity there for spiritual unfolding as well, mm. because when people are in lockdown, it's a perfect opportunity for anybody, regardless of where they are on their spiritual unfolding path, for us to really look within and take that time and when better to do it than I know there's a many, many people still are having to go to work and doing very valuable things for, for us that are in lockdown. But for those of us in our homes, there's a period there that we can really go into ourselves and learn about ourselves. And when we learn about ourselves, things begin to happen. We begin to ask questions. We might get one answer that poses two more questions. That's how it begins. That's how spirituality unfolds within us, searching for our own truths. Yes. And, and likewise as well, you know, in lockdown, my mediumship friends being at home, uh, with my partner, it, you know, sometimes it isn't all bread and roses either. You know, it can bring up some other things uh, that also need to be looked at. And I know that there is a big correlation between our own spiritual growth and our personal growth. And this is why I love what you do as well, because you are, you know, you've got qualifications in counselling and coaching. So you are marrying the two in a very unique way. And I think that's fascinating because I've always looked at them as being, or I've never seen someone that was a spiritualist and a coach that, that could totally get 
you know, where a medium might be or the, or the issues that are really getting in the way. And so how did that happen? Um, well, I studied at Edinburgh Uni for counselling and psychotherapy in 2009. And when that happened, I also began to tutor in 2010. And as I did that, I recognised that what I was learning about myself, anybody that studied a counselling qualification knows there's a huge amount of introspection and reflection <laughs> and, and learning happens. And as I did that, I began to identify in those that I was tutoring where they were and what was popping up in them. And I said the normal thing, which was, you need to go and do that inner work. You need to go do that inner journey. Go and do that um, reflection, unfold yourself, journey into the soul, learn about self. And then I became really discontented with that because I began to think, there has to be more than me sending somebody to somebody who might not even know about the spiritual truth within an individual, but purely counsel or, or coach somebody on that um, transactional level, the top level. Yeah. And so as I worked through, I began to just naturally ask questions or um, pose questions to the individual to see well, so where's that coming from? What would you like it to be? What in an ideal world? What would you like to happen? So we know that coaching and is about forward looking, and counselling is about looking into the past. Very simply put. Okay, that's and interesting. And so we we took that delve into the past, and then brought it into the present, so they could decide what they wanted to do with it moving forward. And so it morphed into something, um, and then I began to teach that way my tutoring just naturally happened mm -hmm. that way and then I met a certain individual called Mr Dykes and we started working together we weren't a couple to begin with at all <sighs> and we started having these discussions about wouldn't it be lovely if we could take my knowledge of the personal development and my tutoring and make it into something and we started thinking oh it'd be great to have some organization where we could deliver training from and we only worked together maybe once or twice a year and then the next year we got together and circumstances had changed and then things just discussions seemed to be in a way that synchronistically they took place we're thinking well what if we did that I wonder if we worked together and did that and before we knew it we were having conversations about courses and working together and then the Spirit and Soul Foundation was born. Yeah. Bill had a conversation with the Spirit team when he was living in England, and I had one with my team. I remember phoning him up and saying, I have an idea, and he said the same. <sighs> like, okay, you go first. And when he said to me what he, like, that's exactly what I've just thought as well. Mm. So there's that, there's that real Spirit involvement yeah. in believing in what we're delivering. So all of our courses now have that coaching approach where we individually coach people through. All our questions allow people to do um, some self-reflection. And when we're asking how they feel about how they've worked, we coach them through finding out if they didn't like it, what would the change, what popped up for them, what self-limiting beliefs are showing up. So we do the self-development in the class. Inside it, that's, it's, it's woven into it. That's Absolutely. the magic. Yes. And now it's hard to separate it out. Mm. I know when we go in and we're doing um, formal training and the mechanics, it is that. However, I can't not, because I feel that just a couple of words will prompt that individual to have that inner reflective practice mm. that will then unlock it for them. I don't give them the answers. No, so no. Them for themselves and being accountable to themselves as well. And that's lovely because that, that's the awareness in the moment because you must see students that are working and then stall or something happens and you know it's not their mediumship skill, it's a person, it's something coming up for them, like that little voice that says, oh, no, you're no good or I got that wrong. Or, and you can see that, they're, that they, they wobble, but it's a personal thing. It's not their mediumship skill. And as we know that who we are is how we are as a medium. So whatever pops up in our life that triggers us to be quiet or angry or 
nervous or to withdraw will be the same in our mediumship. Completely. I love that. And this is why I got excited to talk to you because, you know, you seem to be someone that is doing it together and it's so important to handle whatever it is in the moment. And then I'm sure the mediumship's going to blossom and the soul is going to blossom too. So I, I just love that. And that brings us to the next question because it's my favourite question. The blossoming of the soul, you know, there's so much that's talked about this elusive sitting in the power. Um, uh, it, it, it is uh, elusive um, because so many people go, what is it? You know, it's this mysterious thing that mediums talk about when you train, you've got to be in the power. And what does that mean? And so many people have very different experiences and ideas and views which i think is beautiful because i don't know that it can be tied up into one little bow so it's hard to describe but what's your take on sitting in the power and why mm. is it important for me sitting in the power is the key to everything if we are if we believe that the soul is the medium so everything else is just the garment that goes around it the soul is the medium then we need to allow that soul to develop and if we don't know our own soul then it's very hard to imagine that we would ever recognize the aspects of other people through their soul so our aura is the emanation of our soul so the auric field from a spirit person blends with ours but it's our soul my hands are down in my tummy area because that's where i feel it and um, my soul is where i feel everything about that other person so everything i've ever experienced every pain every joy the grief the um opportunities the hard times in life are all mine but the spirit world used them to identify and i and help me understand their lives and tell their story mm. but to understand ourselves, we need to go within so when we're sitting in the power People will think that they can do it through their minds. So you see people in their, their um, calling some kind of, pulling some kind of face that makes it look like they're trying to get to some place way, way up here. But in actual fact, it's about going within, touching the soul and then allowing it to expand. So our awareness expands, our consciousness comes out into that space around about us. And then if we're sitting in the power and it's different every time, then that's exactly as it should be. Yeah, that was because the thing some... I was fascinated about. Yay, because sometimes we'll sit in the power and we'll be sitting for our own power. So if we work with the spirit world and we need, just say, a 90-minute demonstration. So I need to hold my power for 90 minutes. Mm. If I can't sit in the power for 20 minutes, then it's unlikely I'm going to be able to stay in the power for 90. So I need to train myself to stay in that place and do that blending and allow it, but it takes time. So you might find you'll do one contact and then you'll come out because you can't stay in the power for long. But for we, what we've found is on average, it takes around about 12 to 15 minutes for people to sit in the power to then move into the power. And that's a different yeah. It's this, it's the settling down of the mind and just yeah. getting, it's like you just, and then you feel like, oh yeah, I'm here. And so many times you see it and you think, well, oh, nothing's happened, but then yeah. 20 minutes have gone by and you don't even know they've gone. Absolutely. So every time should be different because sometimes we'll be sitting in our own power. Sometimes it, the, the spirit world will come and blend with our minds. There might be a slight altered state of consciousness comes in where we, lose our own thoughts and we, we jar ourselves back so people often have the, the nodding of the head mm -hmm. and just as our consciousness shifts mm -hmm. but it should be different every time because if we change the term sitting in the power to sitting for spirit sitting for spirit yeah the spirit world can then do what they need to whether it's to leave us alone in our own power to do that soul work but so we might go through some young years, some healing, some forgiveness, some tearful sessions, or they might join us in order to develop our mediumship because that's where developing our mediumship happens. If we don't in the power, in the power mm. we cannot expect the spirit world to be able to adjust our mediumship while we're working. Mm. 
And it doesn't happen at courses. Courses. No, no. It doesn't. And it doesn't. And what we know is courses are fantastic to go to, but it's what happens in between the course that assists the student. Now, we sit in the parrot at home for one hour every single day and mm, sometimes amazing. twice a day because we sit for different parts of our mediumship. But we work full time at it. We know we need to keep our power built up. But it is vitally important if we do not keep the vehicle that we drive in tuned and maintained, we should not be surprised when it breaks down and stops working. Yeah. Exactly the same thing. And it's like a full tank of gas too. You, you, if you need right. to go on a journey, you'll need to have the, the, the petrol to do it. Absolutely. I, I love that. And, you know, the fact that it's going to be different every single time because that's been my experience. And sometimes I know, and other people have said, oh, I don't think I'm doing it right because it wasn't, you know, a lot of people expect to see the burning bush every time. And, and it's not like that, is it? Sometimes it's arduous and sometimes it's beautiful. And mm. yeah. but sometimes I'll be sitting there thinking, I could be doing so many yeah. things. <laughs> but then after a few moments, once I've allowed my mind to settle down, then I'm able to get out the way. It doesn't happen that often, but when it does, it's normally when my mind is very, very busy. And I know that there's a stress or a strain or an emotional shift within me. Emotional shifts get to take place whilst we're sitting in the power. They're very, very important because often we don't take the time to allow that rebalancing and realigning of ourselves to take place. And that's exactly what's happening on the whole planet right now, isn't it? So we can't help not be part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially at this time when we're on our own emotional journey because we're confined with, we're either confined with people we're not used to living with 24 seven, or we're confined on our own. I don't know which one would be worse. Mm. So there's an emotional journey that we go on. So sitting for that power allows ourselves to heal as well. Even more so, yes. Yeah, that's lovely. I, I know lots of people will feel very relieved hearing that take on uh, sitting in the power and, and what it is. And maybe they might be inspired to just go sit even for 10 minutes. That would be, that would be just I mean, there are CDs. That we've got um, CDs that people can download. Yeah. And we, wouldn't, we ad wouldn't advocate that people use it constantly. What it does is it runs for an hour and it talks people in and then leaves the space and then talks people in mm. and then leaves the space. Yeah. So if you want a man's voice, there's Phil CDs. If you want a woman's voice, there's mine. But it's a way of just getting the experience of getting there. It's not a yes. great description of it. But once you know how it might feel, and each time will be different, it takes the pressure off getting there then. It does. Because you it allow does. it just to be. And once you've got the trainer wheels, and then you can fly on your own. No, that's, that's lovely. Um, I have to get a link for those those CDs down the bottom, so that that would be good too sure. if anyone wants a hand. So now um, it's five years ago. Imagine just rewind time five years ago, and you're looking back at your past self as as well maybe twenty years ago because it's long. You're going to be anyone look longer than that, but five years ago, right? You're looking back at your past self. Uh, in your mediumship, in your work, uh, what would you say to her now with the 2020 hindsight you have now? Um, that's a really good question. I would say that don't expect not to change. When things change, it will be uncertain. Never doubt yourself and never lose sight of who you are and what your values are and what difference you want to make for people and humanity. Wow, that's lovely. I think we should write that down. Yes, <laughs> so much so much 2020 hindsight coming out. Absolutely. But, mm. I think there's a lot of people can lose sight in the minutia. And I'm, the reason I say what I did is because I can sometimes be distracted by what's not important and lose sight. I voluntarily walked the path of working for that unseen world. And I need to remember 
what I what pledge I made with the spirit world when I did that. It was about 12, 13 years ago, I said to the spirit world, I came out of one relationship and knew in my heart of hearts I'd be single for a long time and said, I'm now in service to you. And that's when I knew that I could never go back in my word. <laughs> and it stuck with me. It's just part of who I am. Yes, and, and serving the spirit world might not necessarily mean having a million followers on Instagram either. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely mm. not. Mm. It's What we need to do is make sure we stay in touch with the authenticity of ourselves and not get caught up. As we know that, that there's different aspects to people and it would be very, very easy to be caught up in the popularity or the like or the this or the that. But if we stay true to what we believe and remain that ambassador for the spirit world, then we know that we're doing our soul's purpose. And if we lose sight of that, we'll only have ourselves to blame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The physical world has many attractions to it, but none of them will fulfill the soul the way that being in service to something greater than ourselves can fulfill. And we feel it, don't we? We feel that inner, inner true north of our soul compass Absolutely. so much. Yes. And we feel when we've gone off it even a tiny bit too. So, and the spirit world has a way of reminding us of that as well. Yes, <laughs> it's, it absolutely is. We, I was having a conversation with Phil about how do people recognize when their moral compass is off? Mm. when times are hard and life is difficult anyway and it's something in the soul that tells us it's something that not that niggling feeling of yeah. i've forgotten something yeah, it's a niggle yes it is a niggle isn't it and hopefully we're aware enough uh, and we have enough really good friends that that will keep us going even if we lose sight of it for a second because it's very easy and even sometimes we can get misled but yeah, yeah, that's and, and, and maybe and that's where sitting in the power helps as well. Absolutely. It keeps you and us in touch with ourselves. But having really good friends and really good family members is vitally important as well. Because as we go on our journey, we've got to remember that we're the ones that change, not mm, them. Not them. So having somebody that knows who we are and sees that growth and can be honest with what they're seeing because we all need to keep a bit of the feet on the ground. Because yes. life is for living as well, but we need to remain grounded. Yes, yes. Now I have one question that uh, a student has asked that is, is love to hear what you have to say. She heard that quote, you know, all, all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. And of course she's thinking, well, have you ever met someone that didn't have mediumship, you know, what, what would you do? How would you know? I think she's probably concerned that, you know, am I, that big question, am I really a am medium? I a medium? <laughs> yes. What, what yeah. would you say to someone like that? Um, I agree with the statement. I do believe that everybody's psychic and I do believe that everybody has a mediumistic quality about them, but that does not mean they will be what, what we would term a medium. Um, yeah, because we, we've wrongly in some way labelled platform and private reading mediums as mediums. Yes. For me, mediumship covers the spectrum. It covers um, healers. It covers, covers trance, covers physical. Um, healing. Draw, healing. But it also covers doctors, nurses, teachers, counsellors, coaches, anybody who is able to speak the truth of the spirit world from their very being because they're following their soul's path, I believe is giving word of the divine in some way. Absolutely. And that they're, they're, they're being able to serve their fullest purpose. So if somebody is psychic and has a medium mystic ability, then I would say nourish that medium mystic ability learn how to use it, allow it to um, progress and grow. But even an assessment, I feel that somebody's mediumistic potential at this time is not there. Then it's my job to say that. Mm. It's my job to say, I know you desperately want to do private readings. However, at this time, your soul feels like it should be the healer. 
of the yeah. healing or it feels like it should be doing the altered states or it feels like it should be doing the inspirational writing or talking or it feels like you have such a creative ability with you to draw and paint go and allow your soul to sing that way and do your mediumship as a way of adding to your life yes. because we get fixated on mediumship and i would ask the, the person why do you want to be a medium many answers we get is because i want to help people well when times are tough that's not necessarily a good enough reason to get you through those things you have to know it in your soul and i think that's why when students have the knocks of the doubts when they get the no or they get bad experiences they begin to question am i the medium yes You'll be the medium when you believe it in your own soul and you don't need anybody else to tell you. That's and, when you know you're the medium. And that's the calling, isn't it? It's listening to the call. I love that because there's so many other ways we can serve spirit that isn't on the platform or, the, mm -hmm. or in front of the camera. Yes. So we need to ask the spirit world what they want. Am I the medium? Do you want me to do this mediumship? Mm. In the olden days, going back many, many, many years, um, Gordon Higginson did a lovely lecture on how old-fashioned circles worked, how people were, he would sense what their ability was, and they went and studied that ability, even if they wanted something else, because they worked for the spirit world. And uh, if we go back to that type of being in service, yeah. then we will truly be serving the spirit in the way that they need us, not because we have a wish for or a need for any certain way. It's uh, not my will, but thine be done. Absolutely. In the truest sense of the word, isn't it? I love that. Or, you know, in the modern day terms, shut up and get out of your own way. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'd find that quote in the Bible, but anyway. <laughs> Um, so now you, uh, we were talking before briefly and funnily enough about the power, you actually have a course coming up about sitting in the power. Yeah, we have a course and it's one we haven't done online, but we've done many, many other courses online and we know that this will work. We're just about to begin it for UK students. Yes. But what we will do is it's over four days so it'll be two hours probably in the evening um, and I know that's very early morning for you guys but what it does is it allows us to have a good look at people whilst they're sitting mm. and then give feedback that's important them. and uh, and then so we talk we give a bit about what is in the power we gave the opportunity we talk you in and then we give feedback and then we can look at the different purposes of the power, sitting in the power because different mediumship um, abilities require for us to sit in different ways. Some will want music. The altered stage might want music. Yes. Um, for mental mediumship, we always sit in silence. In silence. Yeah. Um, for beginners, they might want a different kind of music. So we've got to be aware of what our soul is needing or what the spirit world is needing and so we're able to fully um, cover that with this and what we do is whilst we're giving feedback we use that coaching approach so it's not giving them the answer it's allowing them to find out for themselves what does that mean because the amount of people um, we did a week-long course called Coaching Excellence into Mediumship and it worked splendidly. And we did sitting in the power every day. Mm. And for an hour afterwards, they're all saying, well, this happened, is that right? Is this happened, is that right? Yes. And eventually they just said, no more questions. For Friday, you've done this five days now. Don't you know that every time will be different and there's nothing that can go wrong if you're blending with the spirit of just surrender and trust yes yes so that's so often the case where people have an experience and they want to ask what it is or what does it mean and as soon as they look at what it means they're out of the power aren't they right because they're using their analytical right. mind and 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 it's like ah so what you know some days you might just write your chores on a post-it note in your mind and other Absolutely. days you'll be in the bliss of the blend and mm -hmm. 
Totally. Look, that sounds awesome. And hopefully, you know, we might be able to twist your arms to do it at a, an, a, an Aussie friendly time. But, you know, lo love to hear if you're watching this, leave a comment below. I uh, love to hear what your thoughts are, but I will pop all this stuff down below so you'll be able to stay in contact with Kerry. Um, so th thank you so much for joining uh, me at this late hour for you. And uh, I know that you've, you've worked hard for this <laughs> and you shared some beautiful, beautiful thoughts and perspectives on mediumship and the power and the legacy of your own tutoring. But the last question I want to ask you is, what is the spirit of conversation you never get sick of talking about? Um, I think it's personal development. I'm passionate about it. Mm. I'm passionate about knowing that the truth is within a person and we get so used to being told the truth or being told the answers that seeing somebody on the quest for their own truth I never, I don't ever tire talking about or being asked about it because for me the two are so inextricably linked that I cannot separate them now. Mm. So I never get tired asking about personal development. Never. What a great combination. That, that is awesome. Carrie McLeod, thank you so much for joining us today on Spirit of Conversations. I look forward to seeing lots more of you in your courses and your platforms. Oh, you're very welcome. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It was well worth staying up for. Thanks very much, Denise.